All right, um, so one of the uh, benefits and downsides <laughs> of having a new instrument is that you want to go measure everything. Uh, if you have a, um, a new way to do something uh, easily that you weren't able to do before or, or super accurate that you couldn't do before, you, you want to go test everything else in your lab, especially if um, you're uh, getting a lot of used stuff, right? I don't buy anything new. And so I, I rely on my eyes usually to see if I think something is good or bad or the specifications from the data sheet, whether I think something is good or bad. Um, so uh, what we're going to be measuring today is uh, cable impedances, okay? This, this box is very nice. It has TDR built in. And TDR sends out a signal and you look at the reflected wave. And just like a, a vector network analyzer, if you send something out and it comes back, you can do some math and figure out what the impedance is, right? A VNA gives you a graph of impedance. And this also can give you a graph of impedance. Um, you set up a TDR and then uh, you uh, go into uh, a selection menu here and you can display things in volts or percent or ohms and we're going to display things in ohms and so we have a 50 ohm system so we have 50 ohms going right down the center and uh, so we have some wigglies here at 50 ohms and that is internal to the machine this is the zero point here okay uh, this little little uh, arrow there so this is the zero point this big spike up is the open. The connector right now doesn't have anything attached. So let's go ahead and attach our cable here. And um, what it's going to do is it's going to launch a pulse down this cable and it will look at the reflected wave. And if uh, things are very nice, get I can't get this thing threaded on here. Come on, you can do it. The problem with uh, this cable is it's very accurately made. And so a lot of the SMA cables are very easy to screw on because they're so sloppy, but this one is machined very, very accurately. This is a very expensive cable, by the way. So right away we see there's a, a spike right here. So we look like we're 50 ohms. This is 50 ohms, 52, 54, 55, 56 full scale. And that's because we haven't torqued it down yet. So we need to use our torque wrench and we will, uh, as, do you see it disappear? Let me back it up again. We have we have a spike there, and as we torque the, uh, I'm right in the way of the camera, aren't I? There's a spike there, and uh, as I torque the, uh, I got to figure out how to get my arm out of the way. As we torque it down, then everything everything goes to zero. So again, expensive cable, expensive connectors, torqued. Everything is nice at 50 ohms now, right? Very very good. All right, a little bump at the end there. What's another bump at the end? Well, that's the connector at the end before it goes to open. There's a little tiny bit of discontinuity there. You can sort of see it here. There's, a, there's just a tiny drop there and a little tiny raise there, and that's due to these connectors, okay? But this is like a $1,000 cable, and this is about as good as it gets, okay? Um, so um, what we want to do today is measure some things that maybe you have. Um, I'm going to go through all of my cables, but let's look at some things that maybe you have. Um, you might have some uh, tiny SAs. Uh, they come with cables. I've got uh, three boxes of tiny SAs, and I've got uh, three boxes of nano VNAs, okay? And so let's go ahead and uh, look at some of those cables. This is, uh, this is a uh, tiny SA Ultra, the 704. And um, let's see here, in the bottom of the box, I'll take this out, and in the bottom of the box comes some cables. Uh, we get two cables, so let's pull those out. Okay, uh, these cables are unmarked, okay? There's no markings on the, on the coax, and they have the standard brass uh, connector, pretty cheap brass connector. Um, Nothing wrong with brass connectors, they just wear out sooner. So we, we see here we have a really big discontinuity due to that due to that cheapy connector. I'm going to torque it down. 
and even though I torque it down, it doesn't go away. So we have this big dot discontinuity because of the cheap connector. And then our cable is about 40, 49 ohms, okay? And so it's a bit, it's a bit low. So you're going to say, oh, that's terrible. Not, not for VNA work. For VNA work, it's going to be just fine, right? Um, if you have something really accurate on your SDNA or something like that, you might worry about it. But, but this is okay, right? Uh, let's go ahead and test, since there's two in the box, let's go ahead and test the other one. I assume they're going to be exactly the same, but maybe the connectors are a bit different on each one. So uh, let me torque this one down. Yeah, once again, we got the big discontinuity and then about 49 ohms. All right. So that's, that's one of those from a tiny SA. Um, let's go back in time. These were the original tiny SAs. Um, they, they came with these little cables, little short little guys. Uh, these are marked. Let's see. These say high quality coax cable. And that's all they say on it. No, no part number, no nothing. Okay. <laughs> it's just high quality. All right. Let's see if they're high quality. Pop one of those on. And uh, we will torque it down. Okay, once again, a huge discontinuity for the connectors. Uh, we're measuring a little above 50 ohms, a bit, in, a bit um, uh, non-uniform. You can see when I bend the cable, when I bend the cable, we can, we, we can introduce uh, changes in the, um, uh, in the impedance. That's one of the reasons that uh, these, the, uh, this expensive cable is made by Gore. One of the reasons these are so expensive is, if, if, is that uh, they're meant not to bend. And if you do bend them a little bit, they, their impedance don't change. So anyway, you get what you pay for, right? Um, so that one, this one is not great. Uh, so it looks like maybe they're shipping, I don't know, maybe with a little better cable these days. I don't know, about, uh, about the same. All right, so those are tiny SAs. Let's go ahead and look at... Uh, Nano VNAs. This is an oldie. This is an H4. Um, uh, so let's see what kind of cables it comes with. Uh, these look like they're the 174 cables, uh, unmarked. Uh, they're kind of the, I don't know, what is that, beige? It's not copper. It's like a really lousy copper, <laughs> right? Like a like an almost copper, a copper copper wannabe. That's what, that's what we'll call it. It's like a copper wannabe. Uh, let's put one of them on. Looks like he's a bit low in impedance. Let's torque him down. Uh, lousy connectors again. We get a big, big dust continuity at the beginning, and we're running about 49 ohms. And if we bend it, yeah, we see a little, little change, but not much. A little bit better. The little bit uh, stiffer cable. Okay, so that was the... That was that one. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, uh, Nano VNA V3, F F V3. Uh, it comes with some impressive looking cables, uh, at least from the outside. They're blue and uh, there is no markings on them, but they're stiff and uh, they look, they look quality. Uh, still have the cheapy connectors on them, but I think every single one you get like that. Oh, look at that. That looks better. Now, see, if I don't have it tightened, you get this, you get all kinds of crazy stuff going on, right? So you need to go and, and uh, tighten it up. That's just due to a loose cable. Let's tighten it up. There we go. And look at that. Very, very nice. So much better interface at the, uh, at the connector and pretty close to 50 ohms. So this is the type of cable that you want for VNA work. Those other crappy cables are fine for SN, uh, spectrum analyzer work, right? You don't care too much about that, as long as they're around 50 ohms. But this is a very nice cable for VNA work. So they chose, they chose good cables. Uh, so I do have to commend them for that. That's the, that's the V3. We'll test one more Nano VNA. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, I take it back. We did test a nano VNA. We tested the almost copper ones. Was an, it was a uh, H4. This is the V3, and the other one uh, that I have is the F, and it has the same blue cable. So we don't need to, we don't need to test that. Let's test some cables that I have in the lab. Um, 
And uh, I showed you the uh, gore cable. Here's another gore cable, even a more, a more expensive one. Uh, and uh, this one has a cable inside of a cable. It has a, a kind of an armor on the outside. It has the corrugated steel armor and it has really rigid uh, strain reliefs. It has connector on connector. There's a connector on a connector. This is like a, a, a piece here that you could replace with time because the cable's so damn expensive. And everything is uh, stainless steel instead of brass. Uh, let's go ahead and pop him on. All right. We need to torque him down. He's looking pretty bad. All right. Oh, come on. Come on. Wow. This cable looks bad. <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm actually shocked. Maybe that's why these were in the junk bin. Uh, we have this really bad, bad thing going on here. There's some kink or crimp or something in there. This cable, this cable looks goofy. Wow. Uh, I don't, it looks like, looks like the shielding has come loose, like right at the beginning here. Wow. I'm really shocked about that one. Uh, that other gore cable was absolutely perfect, but this one looks like crud. I gotta test the cable. I use these cables on my uh, my big DNA. Um, now a lot of times you'll just calibrate this out, and you won't you won't uh, be bothered by it too much. Uh, but it's certainly something you don't want in a metrology situation. Um, wow. Yeah, this one's. This one's got some real problems. I mean, uh, I don't know if that's inherent to the way these cables are built or whatever. Uh, wow. Okay. Learn something new. That other Gore cable was like Superstar. That's what I would expect from a Gore cable. He's absolutely perfect in every way. Practically perfect in every way. Okay. Um, these are... Uh, cables I use all the time for interconnects. Um, I got these super, like a buck a piece or something, super cheap. And these are Sooner cables. Um, they are marked. Uh, let's see if I can find a marking on it. It's very tiny writing. Uh, it's very tiny. Here it is. Very tiny writing. Um, they say uh, Sooner and Enviroflex and Viroflex number I think 315D or something like that. Anyway, these are these are expensive cables if you were gonna go buy them. Um, I like them on the bench because they have right angle connectors on the ends, which I know are gonna give some reflections, but again for like SNA work and, and generators and stuff, you don't you don't care about all that stuff. But for measurements you might. So let's go ahead and torque one of these down. And yeah, we see kind of that kind of that kind of a lumpy bump there. It's not too bad, right? It only goes up to 53 ohms. And then it goes down to 49, which is the cable's a little bit maybe 49 and a half, something like that. I um, mean that's the right angle connector. It just it's just going to have that little bump at the end. And then the other other end, we need to zoom out. Yeah, the other end's going to have the same thing. We have this little kind of downward turn here. We have an upward turn here, which is the other right angle on this end. And uh, yeah, but they're nice cables, these these uh, Sooner cables. Um, my friend, <laughs> I, was I talked to him about Sooner cables. He goes, yeah, he says, we're not allowed to buy those anymore. <laughs> they're too expensive, I think. <laughs> they found a cheaper source someplace else. But just, yeah, Sooner stuff is good. Okay, um, let's see here. I want to show a couple cables just for fun. Uh, let's see here. Um, I got a bunch of cables that I just kind of tied together because they're just kind of extras. And I was, uh, uh, I was measuring them. And let's see here. Let me see if I can find the one that I found interesting. 
Uh, I think it was this one. It has a nice uh, uh, stainless steel connector on it. So I thought, oh, he must be good. So let's pop him on. And uh, yeah, he is good. That's not the one I'm interested in. That's not the one. Let's see here. Okay, was this it was this cable here. Let's put this cable on. Because it'll be a good teaching moment, right? That's what the channel's all about. Teach you guys some stuff. All right. So, uh, most of these tested good. Most of these cables tested fine. And then I got to this one and I went, holy mackerel, look at that. It's uh, doing pretty good here. But then it's got this big spike right in the center. And I thought maybe there'd be a crimp or something or some type of physical damage on the cable right there. And uh, I was holding the bunch of cable in my hand like this. And if, if, as I let my, let my fingers loose and I looked, <laughs> that cable actually is two cables put together right there. So we're looking at one half of a cable, a connector, and then another half a cable. So this cable's yeah. So anyway, that was, that was just kind of fun on my part. But it gives you a, a lesson on looking for discontinuities in your signal path, right? Um, if you were working on a system and you didn't kind of know what was going on, and you saw that bump, you'd say, oh, there must be something wrong. Like, I, I assume maybe there's a crimp or something, but it was a connector. Maybe it's a loose connector, so you need to go there and tighten that connector, and then that bump will go away, right? All right, I'll leave you with one last cable. Uh, and uh, this cable uh, confused me when I first got it, okay? It's this nice red cable. I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. Nice red cable. Um, and so um, I, I, I was using it, and I was getting strange results, and I didn't quite understand why. And um, let me show you why that cable is funny. Looks like a nice, high-quality cable, actually. Uh, let's see here. And let me tighten it down. And it's off the chart. So we need to change our scale here. Let's go back to uh, scale. Let's go back to 10. Nope. Let's go to 20. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> OK. so. That cable is actually about 92 ohms, 92 ohms. All right, so we can set our center line here at uh, 92. And we'll set our per division at two. And yeah, there we go. So here's our 92 ohm cable. It has a good connector on the on, on each side, but it's <laughs> it's 92 ohms, and that's probably why it's red in color. <laughs> like danger, 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 Will Robinson, don't use this cable. All right, and uh, I think it has markings on it. Let me let me see if it has a marking. Yeah, so be careful when you go to the junk store. Um, Oh, uh, now I don't see any markings on it at all. No, I rem remembered it wrong. There's no markings on this in any, any, any way. So anyway, there you go. There are other ways of measure cable impedance. I've covered those on the channel before, but uh, having a nice machine like this makes it super fast and easy and accurate. So that's what I'm doing today.